Hello everyone, welcome to today's video and today we will be understanding Antamoeba Histolytica. In this particular video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to design all these illustrations. I have already designed these individual components and using that, I'll be making this final illustrations and at the same time, I will explain what are these uh, different components and what are their functions. Okay, before we jump on to uh, the illustration of this particular organism, let me tell you something about Antamoeba Histolytica, which is highly important to understand the Antamoeba Histolytica because every component has a specific function and overall that is related to the life cycle of this organism. So, Antamoeba histolytica is, is a single-celled eukaryotic organism belonging to phylum Amoebozoa. So, this is a single-celled, but it's a eukaryotic organism, so it will have features of eukaryotic cell. It contains two forms. One is active, which is motile trophozoid. That is what you are seeing. This is the motile trophozoid stage, and I'll, I'll explain how it is motile, what are, the what are the organs that are associated with the motility, and the dormant, that is another stage. I have designed the illustration, so I'll directly show you that particular stage, which is called non-motile cyst stage. And if you talk about the transmission, this parasite is transmitted through the ingestion of the contaminated food. Uh, the contamination can come from the feces, and which is basically is the the, the source of the contamination uh, for for the for the infection, and it contains the mature cyst of Antamoeba histolytica, not the trophozoid. Next is the disease. It can cause the spectrum. It can cause a spectrum of disease ranging from disease ranging from symptomatic colonization to invasive amoebiasis. We will not go into the detail of that. I'll make another video where we'll study the life cycle of this organism. That will be really, really. Uh, that is going to be a really, really interesting video. So I want you to watch that particular video also, or wait for it, right? And uh, I'll notify you all when I have that uh, video. You know upload it on the YouTube channel and you can basically what you can do is uh, type Antamoeba histolytica life cycle basic science series you should be able to find it out. Next is uh, the the structure so what I'm going to do is I'm going to now design the structure and then we will study the the or the uh, discuss the functions of all these individual things right so let's directly jump onto the slide where uh, we'll construct the structure and we'll discuss the functions. All right, so we are in the slide where we will design the structure of Antamoeba histolytica and we will study the functions of individual components. So I'll start with the 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 outline. So outline of uh, the Antamoeba histolytica will uh, certainly look like something like this, and you'll see the images in uh, various textbooks. Also, it has this weird shaped structure. It's not rigid. It has some some you know projections coming coming out, and they are useful for the, the motion of the organism. So this is uh, the outline that I'll use for the illustration. And if you talk about the size and shape of this uh, organism, the trophozoid, as I've already explained, or the difference between trophozoid and the cyst is, cyst is the non-motile and trophozoid is the motile form, and there are other features also. Now for motility, it need to have some, some structure or some functionality here. It's using uh, the pseudoporia, these are the structure, and I'll, I'll show you what, what I mean by that. But let's talk about the size. It is around 10 to 60 micrometers. So I already have that uh, scale written over here. So you can see the overall dimension of this organism uh, ranges from 10 to 60 micrometers. A huge, uh, you know, it's a huge range. You can see 10 to 60 uh, micrometer. And that is the, uh, you know, basically the size of this. And uh, the outer layer, outer layer is the uh, the cell membrane and in case of you know we know that cell membrane is essential part of uh, most of the most of the organisms and it is the outermost layer it is highly important for uh, organism to survive the trophozoid is basically surrounded by a plasma membrane and this is the plasma membrane and it's a phospholipid bilayer that regulates the movement of substances uh, from outside to inside and inside to outside correct so that is the the structure that is the out outermost layer for the trophozoid correct the next structure that we can uh, that we can uh, make right now or i can show you is the pseudopodium pseudopodium is false foot right that indicates uh, the projection like structure over here so cytoplasm i can i can move this to to maybe right over here so it's not confusing us with the uh, with the pseudopodium pseudopodium is basically that projection like structure th which is uh, which is coming out uh, or it seems like it's coming out. So it's like a false foot. Using that, the organism moves. Next is, let's talk about the ectoplasm and endoplasm. Right? So let's talk about the uh, the cytoplasm overall. Cytoplasm is nothing but the, it's a granular and uh, granular jelly-like matrix that is present. 
inside inside this region and you have ectoplasm and endoplasm it's been differentiated as ectoplasm and endoplasm ectoplasm as the name indicates it's the cytoplasm which is present in the peripheral area a little bit on the outside so ectoplasm is the outer more outer most gel like region of the amoeba uh, and uh, it is basically close to the cell's plasma membrane it is it is denser and more viscous as compared to the endoplasm now where is the endoplasm endoplasm is basically it's a it's the region which is close to the center central area right so i can i can put uh, the endoplasm a little bit closer to the central area and I, i'll move this later on right so right now we have discussed what is uh, the outermost layer which is cytoplasm uh, sorry which is plasma membrane and cytoplasm is the matrix which is present inside that region you have ectoplasm and endoplasm that we have already differentiated and endoplasm is the inner more fluid like region of the uh, the organism and it is located closer to the central nucleus the uh, central region or the nucleus that contains various organelles so various organelles food vacuoles they are they are present in this endoplasm region of the the organism right so i think this is more uh, more like uh, more proportionate and now let's move on to designing the other structures correct so now we need to look inside this organism so you have to just imagine uh, that uh, this probably is the region which is inside of that uh, uh, atomiba histolytica so that that is uh, that that i'm making something something like this so we can differentiate between and a little bit between the the central region and the outer outer region which uh, we are mentioning as a as the ectoplasm right and then next is is the central region where the genetic information is present so for that something like this i have designed uh, where you have uh, uh, the chromatin region in the outside and then uh, you have uh, and the circular uh, region that is also known as um, the name is different we, we call it as a nucleus overall but in this case karyosome is the structure which is which is referred to uh, the basically the structure that is present in the nucleus and the nucleus is the central organelle responsible for uh, containing the genetic material whereas the karyosome is a condensed rounded mass or cluster of chromatin material within the nucleus right so i can uh, just refer to refer to this correct so i can i can uh, increase the size i can label this right and then we have peripheral chromatin i've already talked about that i might have to move this a little bit down and then move this uh, uh, to this region over here that's the peripheral chromatin region correct so karyosome is basically the central central condensed region over here so i think we have discussed uh important structures and we all know what is the function of uh, the genetic material and all few of the other things that are there inside this organism is one of this structure which is the the food vacuole so you can see red colored food is in there and then it's a vacuolar structure circular structure or a little bit oval oval in in shape that is the food vacuole and then i can move this and uh, move this to this side so that i can label this right over here so we have food vacuole let me move it a little bit closer to that side so we have food vacuole and uh, in in amoeba you have uh, this food vacuole structure which is a membrane bound organelle involved in the process of intracellular digestion so as we can we can relate it easily that these are the structures that contains the food and uh, they are responsible for digestion and there are so many other things i will not go into the detail of that next is the rbc now you will you will ask me from where the rbc they are coming into this organism right rbc is red blood cells so this particular organism is causing disease right it it is able to cause the disease in humans so it can utilize it can it can uh, phagocytize it can eat up uh, the rbcs and utilize them as a nutrient source so here are the rbcs and what i have to do is uh, basically label them and i've already packed this particular region okay so right over here that's our rbcs Uh, these are the two rbcs we have rbc is nothing but the white uh, red blood cells and then we have wbcs so i was getting confused because i was moving wbc at the same time so wbcs they are also there so amoeba has the ability to uh, you know take up white blood cells so this is the structure of white blood cell as we all know 
Uh, there are various kinds of uh, WBCs, so I'm just uh, you know representing one of them. So we have WBC right over here, and then we have all these structures uh, dispersed in the in the endoplasm region. And there are some other things also, and I've designed this uh, you know these dots to fill it out. So it looks more like a dispersed cytoplasm containing various organelles, right? Usually all the you know the, the cellular structures that are required by the eukaryotic organisms, they will be there, right? But as you can see, the important structures that are unique to endomyba histolytica, we have discussed all of them. Just to you know revise what we have covered is initially we started from the outermost layer, which is uh, the the peripheral uh, peripheral layer cytoplasm is the is the you know region after that so the peripheral layer is the cell membrane plasma membrane inside that we have cytoplasm and then that is being differentiated into ecto and endoplasm as the name indicates ecto is outside and uh, or the outer region and the endoplasm is is more like the central region then we have nucleus containing karyosome and peripheral chromatin right and then rbcs are also there uh, food vacuoles are also present in, in Entomoeba histolytica, and then because of the pseudopodium, it can move from one place to another. The structure, this is just the illustration. I I encourage you to watch uh, actual images of Entomoeba histolytica. It will be a little bit, uh, you know, different than this, but, you know, to show the structures, I think this illustration, uh, this illustration is quite, uh, you know, sufficient enough so that you can see what are the things. And then we have also talked about the size, and I'm using this bracket structure to represent the overall dimension of this particular organism, right? And we have al also talked about the another feature of this organism is uh, the formation of cyst. So formation of trophozoite and uh, cyst formation from the trophozoite is, is the part of the life cycle of endomyba histolytica. So what happens is when this uh, trophozoite exposes to the environmental condition, to the stressful condition, it converts itself into uh, the cyst form. And uh, what is that cyst form? This is the Antimiba histolytica, histolytica cyst form. So what you have, the difference is it can't move, so you will not see any pseudopodium. It will have a, have a tough, you know, outside layer, and then it will have chromatin body. It will also have a glycogen mass, you know, for the survival, and the nucleus will be there. That uh, central karyosome structure will also be there. So it is very, very similar to the trophozoite structure, but as you can see, uh, you don't have food vacuoles. In that, in that case, you don't have, don't have WBCs, you don't have RBCs, right? Those things are there because it's a dormant form. Now, metabolically, it is more, uh, I would say, it's not active, but it's not completely dead. So we can call it as a dormant form where the cellular processes, they are, they are a little bit slowed down so that it can survive under those conditions. So cyst, if we talk about cyst, under certain conditions like stressful condition, trophozoite can transform into cyst and the dormant and resistant, which is dormant and the resistant form of the parasite. Cyst, uh, they are the stage responsible for the transmission of the parasite from one host to the other host through water or food. So this is the, the actual infecting stage uh, which is released from the host and it is entering into the another person causing the infection. Right, and that cycle goes. It's a very simple cycle, but as you can see, it can cause uh, the disease called entomoeba histolytica or uh, amoebic dysentery, entomoeba histolytica dysentery, and which can be uh, which can be really a uh, difficult, um, you know, conditions, and it can it can cause uh, significant uh, problems in the in the in the gut gut health and overall health of the individual. Now you can see this is our trophozoite, and we, we can uh, you can also compare it with the the other structure, which is the cyst structure. So I think uh, in this particular video, we have covered most of the important points regarding the endomyba histolytica structure and function. In the next one, uh, what I'll try to do is explain uh, the, the life cycle of this particular organism. And then we'll also move on to some of the other important features uh, for this uh, uh, organism and uh, related organism. As you can see, endomyba histolytica, histolytica, uh, histolytica, and I don't know why I'm again saying histolytica, <laughs> histolytica is the is the species name and entomoeba is the genus we also have some other species that are not uh, you know pathogenic this is this is the pathogenic one this can cause infections in humans so it's an uh, important important organism and, and it's important in uh, if you're if you are a student of parasitology and for some reason you want to understand entomoeba histolytica all right so i think i'll, I'll give uh, uh, you know the rest of this particular video i'll just conclude uh, and i hope this particular video was helpful for you to understand entomoeba histolytica in the next one, I'll bring out more videos on uh, different parasites and we'll also study their life cycle. 
if you like the video then please hit the like button and please subscribe to the channel support the channel because uh, of your support i can make more and more videos and then that uh, that you know informate information can be you know freely available to all the students uh, who wants to study uh, the the biosciences uh, subjects including the parasitology all right we'll meet in the next video till then take care thank you everyone